Good morning, Starshines. I am so excited to do this video for you. It is what I've wanted to do for a very long time um, because honestly, Notion is probably one of my special interests. I love Notion. I use Notion for everything. What is Notion? Notion is a free task and project management and note taking software. You can use it on desktop, on mobile, on a tablet, in any browser, and your information syncs across all of your devices. Uh, to start, all you have to do is go to notion.so and sign up. You can use your uh, Google account to log in, which is how I do it. Notion is free to use. You can upgrade to pro or business accounts, which will give you uh, more options, more storage. But if you're just using it for your own personal uh, organization, I find that the uh, paid plans aren't really as worth it, except for the fact that you can upload files larger than five megabytes, which is nice if you are using Notion to store your pattern PDFs. In my opinion, Notion is hugely flexible, adaptable, and powerful because you can build it into exactly what you need from scratch, piece by piece, and function by function. However, it's also really overwhelming because you have to build it from scratch. But there is a workaround if you use a template made by someone else. You can find these templates in the Notion app itself or from creators across the internet. YouTube, Etsy, Gumroad, Reddit, Coffee, anywhere you can think to search for Notion templates. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you the My Stitching Space template for cross-stitch organization that I sell through My Coffee and Etsy shops. Links are, of course, going to be in the description. So let's start off with the template overview. This is what you get when you purchase one of my templates. Uh, I will be showing you the blank template as well as how I use it, as I do use this exact template with a few little tweaks to organize my own cross stitching. So the first thing is you can use either these large blocks with uh, solid headings or toggle headings. So this is a simple heading down here. This is a toggle heading called a toggle because it toggles up and down. I like using the toggle headings because I get easily overwhelmed by too much information. And with the toggle headings, I can have everything on the same page, but I can hide what I don't need at that exact moment. With all Notion blocks, so every piece is considered a block. There, if you hover over them, it there is a small uh, menu that pops up. It's got this little uh, six dots. You can click on that six dots and you will get lots of options. So you can turn a regular heading into a toggle heading in this way. Uh, you can also click and drag to move blocks around. So let's get into the template. The first part you have here is the navigation block. It's just a quick list of links to other parts of the template, including I have written up a tutorial that is basically just how to use this template. This will be great if you are not familiar with Notion as it does go through a lot of the basics of Notion. And it also goes through how to use each and every part of the template itself. Toot was very helpful in setting up this how-to as she was not a Notion user. Um, so I sent her the template and the how to use this template uh, document. And whenever she had a question about it, I answered her question in real time. And then I put that answer into the how-to document. So it should be pretty thorough. The other links are just different links to different parts of the template. And we're gonna be going through each of them individually. Next, I've given you a small box for priorities. Uh, this can be a tick list, it can be a uh, bulleted list, whatever you need. Uh, if you don't really want to use this, you can just delete it. That's the great thing about Notion. You can delete any pieces that you're not going to do. You can move things around. Uh, you can really make it your own. The next one is a new project quick add button. In my personal version of the template, this is called the click for dopamine button. I really like using this whenever I have a large central database that is the heart of a template. Um, and uh, we'll get a little bit more into it, but basically clicking this new button 
we'll add a new project. That's all it is. So let's scroll down to the projects tab. The beating heart of Notion is the flexible use of databases. In a database, information is contained within cards. Every project exists within the same database and we use different views of that database to display the cards we need in a way that works for us. So this is a card. Each card has a list of properties at the top that can be filled out as needed, as well as what is called the page content, the large block of space below the properties. Properties are what are used to filter, sort, and organize your project so you can find the one you're looking for. If you can't find something and you know it's in here, it probably doesn't have the properties entered correctly. Most of these fields are self-explanatory, but let's go over a few of them. So you've got your status. You can set custom statuses. I've entered a few for you. So for example, this could be a queued project, but you need supplies, a queued project, but you have all the supplies, an active whip, a hibernating whip, a finished project, and then one that is completely fully finished. The next one is the source designer tab. Uh, I have pre-entered one for you, which I hope will become one of your favorite designers. But in order to add a new one, all you have to do is type in this box and it will uh, give you the option to create a new designer. This is another way that you can sort and filter your projects if you're looking for anything in, or from a specific designer. The size, you can do the pixel size or the size in inches. Total stitches, this is what you're going to enter yourself. The stitches so far and percentage completed are going to auto populate from something that we're going to talk about later on. You can have what fabric you're looking for, any finishing. So if you know you're going to finish it in a hoop, if you know you're going to finish it as a needle book, anything like that, you've got three date fields. If there's any deadline, when you started it, when you finished it. And then these are links to other parts of the template. The days stitched on is going to relate to our uh, book of days or daily stitching log. The fabric stash is going to relate to the fabric stash, pattern stash, pattern stash, and then any tags. Again, the tags are completely up to you. You can use whatever tags you want. You don't have to use tags. This is just another good way to sort and organize so you can find what you're looking for. Any of these fields that you don't need can be deleted or rearranged. All you have to do again is hover over the six dot menu, click on that. You can rename it. You can edit the property. You can make it visible or invisible. Um, and then just by clicking and dragging, you can move it up and down the list. Down here in the page content, you can do a few different things. So I like to have a picture of the project. So um, if it's a project that's still in progress, I will do a picture of the pattern. To add pictures, you can copy and paste them in. You can use the upload feature on your phone or drag a file from your desktop. Pretty much they'll all work and they'll all display the same way. You can also store the actual PDF of the pattern in here as well. Just upload or drag and drop. There is a five megabyte limit on free accounts. That's for each file, not the total number of files that you have. But I know that some uh, PDFs, especially for larger proje projects, can get quite beefy. You can also type in any notes that you need, any, for example, floss conversions or substitutions that you made, a link to the shop where you are finding the pattern, a link to any tutorials that you need to follow, anything like that. Any kind of information is going to be here. So I did say that every one of your projects is stored within the same database and we use filters and sorting to show them the way that we want. So right now we are on the whips tab. I've set up four views of the database to get you going. As you get more comfortable with Notion, you can add or change these views as you need. This is your stitching space. Do what you want to make it comfortable for you. So the first tab is your whips. And this will show your active whips as well as your hibernating whips. The second tab is your queue. So for this, I'm actually going to switch over and show you my stitching log because there's more information there. 
that's going to give you a little bit of a better idea of what this is going to look like when it's fully filled out with your information. All right, so here we are at the project section of my personal stitching log. As you can see, I have my active whips here, as well as my hibernating whips. The next tab is the queued tab. I have set up my statuses a little bit differently. Uh, so I have ones that I can start ASAP. So this would be the ones that are fully kitted. I have ones that I definitely want to start, but I need the ADA. Ones that I definitely need to start, but I need the pattern. And then ones that are a hard, hard maybe. As you can see, I want to make all of the things. This is where your tags and your uh, designer properties are going to come in handy because you can sort, filter, search your queue as well as your uh, pattern stash for something that you're looking for precisely. The next tab is the FO Parade. So this is a tab that just contains those projects which you have marked as finished. It is arranged by year. So you can see that I started using this template in 2023. And these are all the projects that I have finished in 2023 with a picture of the actual finished project. And then coming up here, these are the projects that I have finished in 2024. The last tab is all projects. So this is going to look a little bit chaotic because it has every single project you have in the database. So this is all of your whips, all of your finishes and everything in your queue. I really only use this view if I can't find something in the tab where it's supposed to be. Um, as you can see, there's a load more button, which means that not everything is able to be shown. So if you still can't find anything, hit the load more and it'll load more uh, lines of the database. There we go. There's there's even more here. So I use this if I can't find something because that means that probably, so these ones down here do not have an, all of the information filled out. So if I was looking for example for patterns from wild bluebell patterns, this forest pentacle wouldn't show up because I haven't tagged it with the designer. So that is your all projects tab. So this click for dopamine button up here, which you will have on yours, um, is connected to this database. It's just a different view of it that has everything filtered out except brand new things. It's not technically necessary. You can delete it if you want. It's just fun. All right, back to your stitching space. These three next blocks are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, nothing fancy, no fancy coding, anything like that. You've got a shopping list. You can keep track of what you need to order. And I like to keep track of what I need to order as well as what project those materials happen to be for. And that way when my order comes in, I'm not hunting for what I ordered them for. It's helped me more than once. You've also got a section for your favorite shops. I've started you off with a couple. And this is your pattern wish list. So if you have like uh unicorn patterns that you are hunting eBay for or out of print originals, uh, this might be a good place to keep those separate from your queue. And you can even drop links to say a pre-set up search on eBay or something like that. Uh, again, if you're not going to use this, you can just delete this section. That's fine. So the next part I'm going to talk about is the daily stitching log. I mentioned this when talking about the project cards as it does connect back to your project cards in a couple of different ways. If you're not the kind of person to track your daily stitching, feel free to ignore or delete this part entirely. It's completely up to you. Basically what this does is it connects the number of stitches that you did every day to a project which you select and then on the project page all those daily progress notes are totaled and calculate it into the progress tracker. All the math is done automatically. All you have to do is enter how many stitches you did each day on what project. You need to make a new card for each project you worked on that day. 
The title of a card isn't important. I'll sometimes label it with the date or whatever motif or section I finished that day. I'm going to hop over and show you what this looks like in my stitching log as it will be more populated. All right, so we're over here at my stitching log for the month of July 2024, and you can see how my month is shaping up. There are some days that I worked on only one project, like the fifth here. There are some days when I worked on three projects, like the seventh here. So each project has its own tab. As you can see on the sixth, I worked on Deadly Aquarium. I worked on exhibit six and I did a whopping eight stitches. So again, these are just a card. Uh, mine connects to my knitting log as well. Yours will not have this knit project uh, line. You can also add any notes and you could even add a picture of your daily progress if you would like. But basically what you need is the date, the stitch count, and then you need to connect it to one of your cross stitch projects. So you can connect it to a project by using the plus or minus over here. It will only link to one project at a time. So if you click that, it'll come up with a list of all of your projects. You can type in this box to find what you're looking for. So in this case, we're looking for deadly aquarium. Perfect. That's the one. And now it's connected correctly. So you can see if I were to click on this, it would take me over to my deadly aquarium. The status is active. It's Lola Crow cross stitch. These are my tags. So the total stitches so far is 11,608. I've done 11,176, which means there are 432 stitches remaining. So I am at a 96% completion rate. The only information of these four that I put into this was the total stitches. The other three fields are calculated automatically from the information I've put into the daily stitching log. If you're getting started with this and you want to uh, add a project that you've already gotten some stitching in on, all you need to do is create a an entry in the daily stitching log that's like a catch-up entry that has the total number of stitches that you've done so far and that will uh, as long as it's connected to the right project it will still calculate these fields correctly all right so going back to our daily stitching log or in my case my book of days the next tab here is the monthly tab this is where you can really drill down if you're a total numbers geek like i am um, you can use the sort and filter functions, which are up here, these two buttons here. This is a filter, this is the sort, and you can sort by any of the fields to find out how many stitches you did on a particular day, week, month, or year, or how many stitches on a particular project in one week, or any combination of data thereof. Once you've filtered the view to show only the data you're interested in, there is a calculate function on the bottom. So here's calculate and each uh, column will calculate individually. So as you can see, I've got this to sum up all of the numbers here. So right now it's filtered to only show what I stitched in July. And I did 6,837 stitches so far in July. I just think this is neat. It's really cool. Again, it's another thing you don't need to use if you're if you don't want to, I just think it's really nifty. All right, the last section on your main stitching log database is going to be your resources. I've put in a couple for you already, but it's just another simple list where you can drop all of your go-to links, um, anything that you need, color charts. Uh, someone gave me a really detailed tutorial on how to wash and iron projects. I just screenshotted that and dropped it into my own resources. So that's what's on this main page. So let's get into the different sections. Your DMC stash. This is a separate database with two views. The first view has already been populated with all of the DMC, DMC variations, and DMC light effects thread numbers and descriptions, as you can see. This is a hefty database. The first time you open it, 
you might need to give it a few minutes to load because there's just so much data in it. There is a tick box on every line for whether or not you own it and another space to note how many skeins you have on hand. The second view is your personal stash. This will show only those threads you have marked off as owning. So let me head over to my own DMC stash and I'll show you what this looks like in practice. All right, so here's my DMC stash. As you can see, I have ticked off the ones that I own along with the skeins on hand. And then if I were to go up here to the tab marked my stash, this is just what I have in stash. So when I'm kidding up a project, I can go to this tab, scroll down, see exactly what I have and how many of it I do have in stock. The next database that I've given you is the Fancy Floss stash. I don't actually use Fancy Floss, but I know a lot of people do. So it's a little bit different to the DMC stash. Uh, if you don't use Fancy Floss like I do, feel free to delete or ignore this page. Here you can enter more details about your flosses, such as the dyer, the color, the number of yards per skein, how many skeins you have on hand. Uh, that will auto calculate to the total yards on hand. So you only have to update these two fields. Uh, you can list any extra materials. You could even open each line of the database as a card and add a picture of each floss as well. Another database is the fabric stash. You can use this for tracking your fabric stash. Similar to fancy floss, you can also add details of the fabric as well as a picture. I haven't added any pictures, but if you open each line, it will pop out and you have a space here to drop that picture in. Let me show you what this looks like on mine so you can see it filled out a little bit more. So this is what the fabric stash over on my section looks like. As you can see, I am not very adventurous. I use Ada, it's mostly 14 count and it's mostly from Amazon. But I have everything listed here with the size of the piece that I have remaining, where it's stored and any projects that I have lined up. You could use this to queue up projects attach certain fabrics to certain projects. You could use it to um, attach fabric to projects that you already have going on, anything like that. It's just a very simple, easy way to keep track of your fabric stash, especially as your fabric stash grows. All right, the last major database we're gonna talk about is the pattern stash. And this is actually one that I use a lot. I use this feature of Notion a lot in combination with Google Drive. I use Notion to not only catalog, but also store the majority of my digital patterns. So I'm actually going to it. So your template comes with a small freebie pattern from myself already set up here. But let me hop over to my own pattern stash and I can show you what it's gonna look like when it's more filled out. So this is my pattern stash, uh, which I have renamed the Colt Archives. And as you can see, I have a lot of patterns. The more patterns you have, the longer the database is going to take to load. So just give yourself a little bit of extra time whenever you need to search by things. So let's take a look at one of the patterns. So there aren't as many properties here. So you've got the size, I've put in the size in pixels or in stitches because I'm not sure what count ADA I'm going to use. Uh, the pattern source, so this would be the designer, the number of colors used, the date added field uh, is automatically calculated when you create the card. Uh, and that's just handy if you wanna see the most recent patterns that you added to your stash. Again, we have tags, which I am not great at keeping up with, but as you can see, I have lots and lots and lots of tags. Uh, and that's good if you are searching for anything in particular. This field here will relate to your projects. Um, and you probably saw it on the project card as well. Uh, you can connect it directly to the entry in your pattern stash. And that's really handy because a lot of the time, so this is, uh, Woodcut Stitch Witch by Raven Stitchcraft. This is the uh, 
pattern image I just copy and pasted from the website. And then these are all the actual uh, pattern PDFs. So I don't need to go anywhere else. My PDFs are right here. Like I said, there is a limit of five megabytes on the free account. So before I upgraded, what I would do for ones larger than five megabytes is I would drop those into Google Drive and then leave a link to the file in Google Drive in here instead. You could also make a note if it is in a physical book, which book it's in, where you're storing the book, things like that. One thing I've done, this is, does not come standard. I have created these additional views. So for example, I really enjoy patterns by the Witchy Stitcher. And I created a view over here that is pre-filtered. So I've used my filter over here, pattern source, the Witchy Stitcher. And this will just show me patterns from the Witchy Stitcher. I could also do things that are filtered to just show me patterns with mushrooms in them or just patterns that I added in the month of July, things like that. Of course, you can do that over here in the gallery. You can use the filters and sort functions to uh, create those. I just created these as shortcuts because these are filters that I use quite frequently. All right, and the final little thing, I've included this as a bonus. If you do not play WIPGO, you are completely free to ignore or delete it. But if you do play WIPGO, I've set up a template for you to play WIPGO on. Um, so this is the board. The problem is that Notion uses adaptive sizing. So there's no way to have it set and be exactly five squares wide. So you kind of have to drag this around until you get that five by five grid. Um, but each of these you can connect to a project. You've got the links to the official WIPGO Facebook group and the how-to video. You can write down what numbers were called when and what projects uh, are associated with them for you. I've given you two boards. If you only have one, just use one. Uh, but I've set one up. If you would like to duplicate these, all you need to do is of course go over to your six dot menu, click on that and you can duplicate it and it'll just create a copy and then you have another board to, to work with. So that is just a little extra for you guys. All right, so that has been the My Stitching Space Notion template and as well as a little look at how I use Notion to track my cross stitch projects. I will also be releasing a video on the My Knitting Space version of this template. So keep an eye out for that. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please leave a like or a comment. If you would like to see more Notion content, please let me know in the comments below. And this template, as I said before, is available for sale in my coffee and my Etsy shop. Links to both of those are going to be down below. And if you have any further questions about Notion, you can feel free to join our Discord server. Again, link is gonna be in the description below where we have a wonderful community of people, many of whom use Notion and know what they're talking about. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed and I hope I have inspired you to try out Notion to track your very own crafting journey. All right, bye guys.